All right, so we're in the middle of getting a blade all sorted out here. We got a couple pieces that are tore up and bent, and you can kind of see here how this one's all welded and ugly. And uh, what other piece was bad? This piece here is not original, I don't think. So we kind of got to work on that. And um, we also need the piece that goes in the end of the rock shaft that this links to. So we'll need to get that. And that's got a little bent spot. And anyway, getting all that ready to go. We got these uh, pieces for the uh, blade frame ready to go. The uh, Shane knocked those holes out yesterday in a super cool drill press. And then we're going to try to bend these spots right here. And here is the bottom one where the uh, mold board goes. We just kind of put a little uh, dots there so that'd be ready to go. And uh, that way if the line got tore up, you can still see it when we center punch the other holes. So you can kind of see that layout up through there. So we're going to knock this out on a what is this thing a 65 ton scotchman iron worker
one more little bit. So we've got some parts now. They uh, showed you a little bit ago, bending those guys. They turned out really nice. And here's what we were trying to duplicate. You can see how bent up these guys were and twisted. A lot of twist in that thing. So uh, it made the plow set all funny. So uh, we got our holes all put in now and, and bent and ready to put. This is where the braces go. Of course, these holes over here is for this area. And uh, we'll transfer this. It needs a little bit more adjusting in it but um and also we need to trim this piece off just trim cut that weld out and then we'll just attach it over here once we get our through bolt all bolted in but um i want to talk about that through bolt for just a minute you can kind of see how this one i'm not sure if it's an original or if somebody made it it's it, it's a good looking piece looks like they made it on a lathe uh really good looking machine work on that thing problem is it threaded too far you can see how hard it is on those threads whenever uh, you can see they just beat down to nothing where uh, they are where the mount is and this thing's all it's too short for one and it's it's been uh, beat on pretty badly and this one's been bent and everything else you can kind of see the bend in that poor thing but um there you, go. you can see it real good but uh so what we're going to do is uh get this um straightened up just a little bit it's got a little bit of a tweak going on with it so we get that straightened up and uh, uh our through bolt you can see the difference here when we made the new one we made it the correct length and then also all of the uh this this thread goes back into this bracket just a tiny bit this kind of kind of squeezed together you can kind of see it's all being in right here but this is correct for it when it sets on the tractor this length is 17 inches from uh the um, outside of bracket to outside of bracket when it's in the uh, tractor and so it stretches it apart so we made this 19 inches and then we tap just a, or yeah a die put a threads on it with a die just a tick over an inch that way the nut doesn't bottom out in the threads and we'll have enough room um, for it to uh, to all this material right here to be in the it'll kind of look a lot like that right there so the material will be in the hole with the correct diameter instead of in the threads because it is just too hard on them, beats them to death. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at. We got our new blocks all uh, ready to go. They're machined and uh, down the middle. So those will go in the uh, front implement mount and uh, we'll get all this tightened up and we'll trim our, uh, our pin. Had to order a new, um, uh, I, we'd call it a C-frame on a dozer, but this little bracket right here, International has a different name for it, and I can't think what it is. But the original one, this piece right here is off the original one, and this piece is, and somebody's cut this off, and I really don't know what that does out there. So if somebody knows what that extra little leg does on an A60 blade for a Super A through 140, leave that in the comments below, because I don't know what, what goes out there. I can't find anything for that. So, uh, but anyway, this little piece and that piece was original. They welded that one in crooked. I'm not sure if the camera shows it yeah, crooked in there. And none of this is right. It's all been gobbed up. And then it's supposed to have a little filler piece here. And then this one is supposed to be on the same plane as this one. Well, it's not. It's whatever that is, 5 16th low. So, and, and these are tubing. And I'm pretty sure, I haven't seen the others yet, but uh, you can see that's like a piece of two inch square tubing there you go and uh, so I'm pretty sure those are bar stock but I'm not sure we'll know soon 
And the other piece I ordered was this guy. This has been all, I mean, just destroyed. Somebody's welded and cut, and I mean, it's it's just a disaster. So uh, that piece and the, uh, again, what I'm calling the C-frame, it's it has a different name. I can't think what it is, but um, it is a, uh, it's coming in. And I ordered that from Brandon down at uh, um, Birch Store Tractors, and uh, I've ordered some other parts from him before, some coal planter parts. He carries a lot of uh, coal planter pieces and gobs of stuff for these guys. I also ordered, let me walk over here. Um, you guys have seen this tractor before. It is a, su no, I was about to say Super A, didn't I? It is a Massey Harris Pony that is uh, an early one. So it's red and yellow, correct colors. And there's one of the late gray ones. And you guys go back and look at the video where these showed up. But the wheels are the wrong color on this tractor. They're like a John Deere yellow or something. So I, I went over to the paint shop and ordered up some uh, paint uh, the right color. And wow, that stuff's expensive now. But it is uh, here and in a can and ready to go. But um, the problem is these tires are very, very much like new. And... They're the wrong size. They're 11 to 24. It's very much wrong size for this machine, but perfect for the Super A's and 140 stuff. So plan is to um, get these wheels off here. And these tires are in horrible shape. They are, yeah, there you go. I'm pulling you around here. You can see that horrible, scary spot. But we're going to uh, break the tires down after we get the wheels off of it, get the rim wheels all shot with the right color, then I've got brand new tires over there for this tractor and a front and rear. And then that'll let us use these on another tractor. I'm thinking about putting them on the Super A1 when we get it going. It's hiding right over there. So uh, I think we're going, I'm going to try to buy two new front tires to go with those. And that'll make a really good looking set of rubber for that tractor. And also ordered from him a set of side covers for this tractor. Um, it had one right there. These are the ones that were originally gray uh, under that weird color paint they put on it. Um, right here you can see it. That was the original. You can kind of see the different color in there. So uh, these go to that gray one right there. And there's the gray hood. Again, somebody painted over all that mess, that odd color. But um, at any rate, we're going to... Uh, Try to get this one just quick buttoned up. We just already rebuilt the carburetor on it. Need to kind of mop up some of the electrical system, get it. A another thing, I see this a lot of times. People put these little bitty cables on them, and that is definitely not the way to go for a 6-volt system. You always want to go twice as big as you would for a 6 for a 12-volt because uh, the, the voltage drop you'll have. So uh, we're going to make some new cables for this guy, run some new fuel line, and... Uh, clean up some of the electrical mess see if we can't get this thing kind of buttoned up it, it shouldn't take much to have it finished so we'll love already like so we've got almost everything here for it just needed one more side panel and they don't sell them individually so end up buying a pair and i bought one of these guys right here this little tube um because the gray one's missing one so uh but anyway we've got that stuff coming in and uh, but I wanted to show you a little bit of update on our plow. So as soon as those parts get here, then we'll be ready to keep trucking with the plow project, get that thing all wrapped up. And uh, we've kind of been straightening on it, and uh, we got the uh, the front piece here straightened. It was all kind of whopper jawed out here, and our lift link here. It it's still not a hundred percent perfect, but it is a lot better. This should be straight, and that should be straight, and it's still got a little bit right here. And then we had to bend this part back a little because it was uh, leaning way too far over there. So now it all lines up pretty good. And uh, I really can't do much more aligning until we get this other piece finished up so it sets true. So once we get that set true, we'll do all the fine tuning on that piece. And uh, But yeah, like I say, just wanted to show you a little bit about this. And uh, like I say, I think we're really, really close on that thing if you kind of line it all up and account for the bends it's uh pretty doggone close so uh real excited about getting that thing all fabbed up there so we'll um again i don't want to cut this pin here either until we know the thickness of the uh, c-frame there so we'll 
uh, when we get the uh, C-frame dimension to where it's going to set and the, the thickness of the uh, material there, then we'll drill this for cotter pins and uh, we'll make that thing look a little better. The original one, well, I don't know if original, I'll say the one that came with it is right here and it has just a drilled hole on the end with a washer and then they welded a piece of pipe on the end of it. it still has its threads so it looks really super cool it probably adds horsepower too kind of think of it anyway but uh, i think they had to do this because they use that square tubing being the wrong stuff so it kind of made lots of problems that inner dimension was too narrow and you saw those tabs folded up on that lower part and this wasn't long enough so they ended up welding a piece on it and putting a pin out there a little further to retain it and uh I don't know, it just it's bent a little bit right there. It's not really interesting reusing that. So we'll make a new one. And uh, it's really taking shape. This this section here is in pretty good shape. A couple welds right there that are going to need cut off, ground up a little bit, ground down, smoothed up. So we'll do that tomorrow. And I uh, got new pins for, or retainer pins for these pins. So uh, I think we're doing pretty good. We've got the, I've uh, got new pins for these as well. And uh, these are the, as far as I can tell, the original style pin for that, so real excited to have those. And I uh, just bought some really nice hair pin style pins for that. And uh, yeah, also we ex put this extension, I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet, but this is a, a extension off the other side of one of these tractors, and that way none of this mechanism gets in the way of the light. I was just, uh, I didn't want to tear up that light. Plus I think it'll give a little better visibility around all that mechanism there so not that we'll probably do too much plowing in the dark but uh i think it'll look look better than bent up stuff so you can kind of see how this is one of those long ones right there too so uh, anyway there's your quick little update again wait on a couple parts to get here and we'll uh, change those out and get our last little bit of fab work done then we'll um another thing too before we um weld this piece on what we'll do is we'll put it all on this new bar and get it in position so that it'll have a, a straight shot through it on this one so that we don't have any discrepancy in in the, getting the wrong plane in there somewhere and having a hard time getting the bolt in so we'll uh, kind of use it as a jig to hold all this in place tack it in place make sure it's going to do what it's supposed to and then we'll uh, we'll burn this piece in to this one and uh, i think it's going to be really nice it's looking really sharp real tickled about it mr treadway over there shane you've seen him he's he built the uh the orange or not orange green splitter that's on the channel you go back and check that thing out about a year ago and uh, he's one been helping with all these uh little pieces getting them uh drilled and uh, bent and ready to go so uh you go check out his splitter over there. there's quite a few videos on it too so anyway we're getting a little closer on this guy getting it ready and uh this one here doesn't like much either we got the uh we've got to weld a little tab up inside there where the springs are and um we got the rock shaft off of it today i'm not going to run a rock shaft on it because i really don't think i need it on this tractor because it kind of does one thing and that's mow and i was really concerned that the rock shaft and this mechanism would try to occupy the same place and bend something up so uh, i just left it off or not the rock shaft but the, uh, the operating arm for it so we went ahead and pulled this rock shaft off and it was a split one and we put it over on the 48 over there because the original one for it had a slight bent spot on both arms and it just didn't set level and this one was perfect so we just pulled it off of here and uh, we did put the draw bar on this one and ran the tap through the holes got all the holes all cleaned up and everything so it should be in pretty good shape it needs a bath and uh, i think it'll be ready to go so uh we may even put a new steering wheel for this one i've got one laying here i may this one's had a couple better days in its life so we may put a new steering wheel. you can kind of see a bend in that one we may straighten that steering rod too and uh, get that ironed out and yeah needs a bath and i believe she'll be about ready to to go to work so pretty excited about that we've also got some sheet metal here i did mention that this hood right here and that uh grill we might uh try to get those all massaged down flat and get them over on there and uh yeah just uh pretty excited it's coming along there and getting these guys ready and uh our goal is to have these two uh all kind of shook down and ready to go and do a little bit of work around but but we like to uh, get them to the state fair of west virginia this year that's 
I was last year we took three up there and had a great time got to meet a bunch of great people but I, I really like to try to take something different up there there's there were a couple machines up there that had implements on them but uh, not many the, the three we took had a one had a plow one had a 22 mower which is a lot simpler than this one and I think that was on a super a and then we took the 130 with the one point fast hitch plow and to me the imp the implements are the super cool I mean I love tractors and just the tractor sitting there is neat but I think it kind of adds another level of interesting whenever you've got something that can actually work there with so we're going to try to take this one get it all ready to go and again we're not building it to be a show tractor just kind of in work clothes and this one with a plow on it and or the grading and leveling blade as international likes to call it so we're going to take those two and uh we may take this one over here to the 48. I'm not real sure if we'll have room to take some more, but those are kind of the three that I really like to get up there this year. Got a neat story on that one. So, uh, we'll, um, again, that's kind of our push to get some of these done while it's blue, cold, and miserable out here in this winter. And we'll try to get some of these done. And, uh, yeah, then uh, when spring gets here, here soon, we're going to fire the mill back up and get some sawdust made. But, that way when spring and planting season and summer's here, it's just hard to, to get time to work on these. And uh, winter's a good time to do these kind of projects. So that's what we're going to plan to do. Get some of these things all slicked up and ready. And uh, there's your little shot of them. And uh, again, hopefully we can meet our goal to have them all up the State Fair this year. So if you're uh, free, come up and see it. It's, uh, I think it's first, I don't know, within the first couple of weeks of August. So uh, again, Stop by the West Virginia State Fair and check these guys out in person.